Protecting your vegetables is a constant daily process. It's the first thing anyone does when visiting the allotment, that is check the produce. On one of my visits uh, and on checking uh, to see if the rats had returned or done any damage, I was upset to find that they buried the tunnel and they're now getting in from this spot here. I have visited the uh, allotment but it's been too wet uh, conditions, it's not drying out now and the only person that's enjoyed themselves is the dog going uh, an extra long walk. The second week of uh, February the weather has not improved, uh, it, we've even had some snow this weekend. My inability to uh, work on the plot this week leads me to start reassessing my protection of my vegetables against pests. The disappointment of seeing cabbages devastated by caterpillars, black fly on the broad beans, slug damage, the list seems endless. The truth is, there's a war going on out there. So rule one, know thy enemy. They are legion. So the first job was to get the beds netted. Choice of netting is important. I first made the mistake of buying the cheapo netting from the pound shop, useless. I thought it was opportune to, uh, that I share my actions and thoughts and the cost so far in providing protection for my vegetables. What do my neighbouring plot holders do as a defensive measure? And are their circumstances the same? Well, their main line of defence is their rabbit fences because they've all got central plots. So can I depend on my rabbit fence? And the answer is no, because my plot is a corner plot and two sides have no rabbit fences but are of hawthorn hedges. I had to use my raised beds as a fort. Put my defences behind the first fort and when that's secure build another fort or another raised bed and so on uh, till I'd got all the raised beds that I require. So I started to build with two and this would give me some idea of what would be the cost. In my eyes the fort is the enviro frame built on the firm foundation of a raised bed. Used scaffold boards were first considered but were discounted for the following reasons. One is the availability. Scaffold companies mark their boards with unique identification tags. Why? Well, with 40 years experience of the construction and civil engineering in industry, I knew there were rogue scaffold companies that did not buy new equipment, but would steal equipment off building sites. You come to site on a Monday morning and find your scaffold gone. EEC rules came in led by the UK for health and safety that boards not fit for use are to be destroyed which like cabbages puts up the price for second hand boards. If there is an accident on a site the safety executive could find a board not fit for purpose with someone's ID tag that records show as sold. Big fines occur or even a jail sentence. Two, cost. The cheapest rate I obtained for used boards was £11.40, let's say £12 in round figures. I would have to buy all I require in one go, plus sundries, pegs, screws or nails, and delivery. We are talking £500 here. I tried for second down floor joists of 8 by 2 but it was getting them to the plot. We also required denailing, and most of them were covered in mortar dust and I could not get them into the car so again 
delivery costs uh, were a factor. Only one thing in their favour, they are more substantial than scaffold boards. So I investigated new. Now a length of 8x2 regularised softwood to the nearest standard length of a scaffold board is 12 foot long. Scaffold boards are 13 foot. Cost per joist equals £12.31. New scaffold boards from Wix £16.99. I couldn't afford uh, the time or the uh, money to build the uh, rabbit fence all in one go. So except for the area where the rabbit warrens were, which I had to deal with right there and then, um, I've done the rabbit fence in bits and pieces as posts, which turned out to be the most expensive and it quite a lot uh, become available. Um, by foraging. Foraging for posts is quite easy. Uh, I use a, a local uh, fence uh, material supplier and you go in there and I'll buy some edging material or pegs and there'll be a van in there of a fencing contractor that's replacing the fence and you look in the back of his pickup and there'll be some old posts and you just say to him can I take those old posts off you? Of course you can. And you take them home and you clean them up. And you've got them for free. So it appears that the EnviroMesh is the product that gives the most benefit. What we have to then decide upon is how we support it. So it appears that the EnviroMesh is the uh, product that gives the most benefit. What we have to then decide upon is how we support it. Well we know the muddy boots uh, works okay. Not quite happy about the, uh, the hoops, that's a bit flimsy. It's worth a visit to this channel. So I'm trying another one now which is the Castle Hill frame. And that seems to be working out at no extra cost at all. The wire mesh is turning out to be uh, quite expensive, but it, we don't put it on every frame. But to do a, a raised bed, it's uh, an extra cost of uh, £12 per raised bed. There's not a lot you can do about the council workers except threaten them. So I put this sign up. Well, Thank you for watching, hope you found this interesting, um, in part 2 I'll be showing how I made these frames and what adjustments I made and uh, some of the savings, but uh, if you liked please give me a, a thumbs up, do comment, I'm sure you've got some comments to make about the frames and uh, I'll see you next time, bye.